Welcome to our comprehensive guide on psoriatic algae, a condition that affects millions of people worldwide. I am Fatima Hamidi, a licensed physical therapist, and today we're going to discuss the causes, symptoms, and effective treatment for psoriatic algae. Psoriatic algae can be a very debilitating condition causing pain, numbness, and tingling sensation along the path of the psoriatic nerve. But fear not. Throughout this video, we're going to discuss the science behind this condition and equip you with the knowledge to manage and overcome its challenges. Whether you're currently experiencing sciatic pain or you're curious to learn more, this video will empower you with the latest knowledge on this condition. So let's uncover the secrets to manage the sciatic pain effectively. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if it was beneficial for you. Thank you. Psychic algae can be attributed to various underlying causes that result in compression and irritation of the nerve along its path. One common cause of sciatic pain is herniated disc. This happens when the soft inner portion of a disc retreats through the tough layer exerting compression on the nearby sciatic nerve. The compression to the nerve leads to pain and other associated symptoms. Degenerative disc disease is another prevalent factor. Over time, the discs in the spine may undergo wear and tear, losing their elasticity, and become less effective in shock absorption. This can lead to disc bulges or disc herniations, causing the sciatic nerve irritation and compression. Muscle imbalances can also contribute to sciatic algia. When certain muscles in the lower back, buttocks, or hips become tight or weakened, they can disrupt the stability and alignment of the spine, resulting in increased pressure on the sciatic nerve. Additionally, certain risk factors such as age, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, occupational hazards, and pregnancy can increase the likelihood of developing sciatic algia. Now that we explored the causes of the sciatic algia, let's move on to understanding the diverse range of symptoms of this condition. The primary symptom of sciatic algia is pain along the path of the nerve. The pain typically starts in the lower back and can travel through the buttock, down the back of the thigh, and even extends to the cuff or foot. The pain may vary from a mild ache to a sharp burning sensation. Along with pain, individuals with sciatic algia may experience numbness or tingling sensation in the affected leg. This numbness or tingling may be felt in a specific area such as lower back, buttocks, or even toes. It may also manifest as a sensation of pins and needles. Muscle weakness can also occur with the sciatic algia. Compression and irritation of the sciatic nerve can also affect the muscles that are innervated by the sciatic nerve. Individuals with sciatic algia may not perform specific tasks like walking or foot drop. In some cases, sciatic algia can cause hypersensitivity or decreased sensation to touch or temperature in the affected leg. Exercise plays a vital role in managing sciatic algia. First of all, we are doing some stretches. Number one, piriformis stretch. Piriformis muscle is a key muscle in managing sciatic pain because tightening of this muscle can cause irritation and compression of the sciatic nerve while exiting in the sciatic notch. To do piriformis stretch, first of all, lie on your back, bend your knees, put the affected leg on the other leg, and then push your knees toward the opposite shoulder. Feel the stretch in your body, hold the stretch for 10 seconds and don't forget to do breathing. Repeat 10 times a day. The next exercise is a cat camel exercise. For doing this exercise, start on all your fours, I mean both of your hands and both of your knees must be on a table and then arc your back upward like a cat and then deeping it downward like a camel. Pay attention to my neck movement. Don't forget to do breathing while doing this exercise. This exercise is great for flexibility and spinal mobility. Repeat 10 times a day. The next exercise is hamstring stretches. To do hamstring stretches, sit on the edge of a table and then try to extend your knee and move your toes toward yourself. Reach your toe with your hands and with a straight back. Feel a great stretch back of your thigh. Hold for 10 seconds and don't forget to do breathing. And then do for the other leg. 
it might be hard to reach your toe at the beginning of doing this exercise, but as you progress, it will be easier. Knee to chest stretches. Lie on your back with your legs extended. Slowly bring one knee toward your chest using your hand to pull the knee closer. Hold the stretch for 20 to 30 seconds and feel the stretch in the lower back and buttock area. Repeat with the other leg, alternating between sides. Okay, now we are done with the stretches. We are going to do a nerve mobilization or a nerve glide in order to mobilize the sciatic nerve and alleviate the compression and irritation of this nerve. Lie on your back with legs straight and then bend the affected leg 90 degrees, knee 90 degrees and hip 90 degrees. And then slowly extend your knee as much as you can until you feel a good stretch back of the thigh. You might not be able to do fully extension of the knee as you begin this stretch, but gradually it will be better. Repeat 10 to 20 times a day. To strengthen the muscle that relates to sagittalgia, we're going to do glute bridges. To do glute bridges, lie down on your back, bend your knees, and then push the hips off the table until you have a straight line from your knees to your shoulders. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds and repeat 10 times a day.